about a lonely woman in her 50s who takes on a stray cat, but that unexpectedly leads her to meeting a vet whom she conceives a dangerous obsession with. She followed the vet's instructions, mix the powder with half a can of cat food once a day, but after three days of Mamie obediently gobbling up what she was given, there was no change. The cat's body, lusty and broody, seemed to take up the entire three square meters of their room. She sat on the single bed, hugging her knees, her back against the wooden partition, watching the cat twist and turn, thinking about that pair of hands probing and pressing all over her body. He was of medium height, his wrist bones comparatively wide and his palms thick, but who knew what his hands really looked like underneath those gloves? Probably like a scholar's hands. Or perhaps there'd be scars. Yes, surely there would be. Little animals are always clawing and biting. Who knew what his hands looked like under those latex gloves? If only she could see them, she might learn a little more about him. She really wanted to see those hands. She reached down and hugged Mamie to her, running her fingers over the cat, retracing the path his hands had taken. The chin, between the eyes, top of the head, neck, spine, tail, paws. Then he lifted her by her four little paws to examine her underside. Good, good cat, that's it. Put your claws away, such a good cat. Of course, she knew he was just coaxing his patient and hadn't meant it as a compliment on how well Mamie had been brought up by her owner. She pressed her nose into Mamie's short fur and breathed deeply, for there was nothing out of the ordinary. Still, she knew Mamie's body was seductive in a way she'd never experienced. He'd said, when female cats are in heat, toms from several kilometers around will detect their scent, so you also have to consider whether you're prepared for hordes of males to descend on you, fighting and howling outside your home. And she'll want to go outside day and night. You should think about all this. Mamie turned over on her knees. She lowered her head and touched her face to the point he'd indicated on the cat's belly. Mamie wasn't concerned. How sweet she smelled. Like a carefree child, the cat tangled all four limbs in her hair licking her mother's neck with a sandy tongue. You could hear the blood flowing through her veins, vividly gushing with desire. Recalling that day, the rumble of the animal's lust sounding beneath his hands, she opened her eyes wide, unable to stop tremor after tremor passing through her body. As a young woman, she wondered whether she'd end up like this, watching the flames of possibility in her life wink out one after another, all the while slowly drying up as she approached the end. What she hadn't expected was the reality being even more depressing than her worst imaginings. So for instance, she reckoned she would, before getting too old, hurriedly marry someone or other, not someone rich or powerful, nor even someone who particularly loved or was loved by her, but at least this would be an existence she could explain to herself and others. The space left in her life after youth had flowed away would need to be filled by marriage or something else. Otherwise, she'd only be able to face the world sorrowfully, apologetically. Yet it seemed even such a haphazard solution would not be open to her. And she'd always thought she was good at planning, though not calculating. She'd been a bus conductor and for a long time had worked as general manager of a small trading company, not to mention her many years as an accountant. Surely that indicated an ability to plan clearly. And should it someone skilled at this have nothing to worry about? But she hadn't known the world doesn't normally allow us to hold on to our little comforts. One year, after finally saving enough, she bought a place on the fringes of the city a 35-year-old apartment of 20-odd square meters. This was about all that could be accomplished by a woman on the wrong side of youth, looks, education, wealth, and marriage. 
But soon after this, one parent got cancer and the other dementia. You could say these things happen sooner or later, and what does it matter? But what else could an only daughter do, especially one mature in years? She sold the flat. Of course, her father and mother died in quick succession soon after. After that, she lived in shared accommodation, rooming with college girls who never stayed more than two or three years. She looked at them with the gaze of a caged beast eyeing birds, and as a result, none of them could stand her. Still, she never thought she'd find May Me as unwanted as she was. That day when she stuffed the cat into her backpack and watched the warm, wet, dirty animal curl up and go to sleep, not stirring even as she finished her shift and, mind and body clumsy with drowsiness, carried her the two bus rides home, stopping at the convenience store at the alleyway entrance to buy some dry cat food before finally climbing the stairs to the flat. She didn't know that these days, owning a pet is a fraught business. Relying on common sense, she got some cat litter and filled a tray in the corner, a bowl of water and a dish of food next to it. She didn't suddenly become broody and start sighing with regret. She wasn't that sentimental. Still, her life was no longer the same. There were even times when she experienced happiness offering her fingers or some paper or a piece of string for Mamie to play with. The TV volume turned up loud to cover the sound of her laughing and talking with the cat. When she opened her room door each day, without exception, Mamie would be sitting just inside, looking up and with the utmost self-control, uttering a single meow. More than once, she'd see Mamie glaring at the mosquitoes on the ceiling and contemplated moving to a bigger place just a little larger, nothing too extravagant, ideally with the window facing the outside. Maybe should be able to crouch on the sill, trying to snare passing birds. But she hadn't counted on Maybe's reaching maturity, her cat's ripening youth bringing her into contact with him.